Hello and welcome to Deaf Bible Study for this week. We have an exciting story, a story you have heard before, probably. Uh, maybe the most famous story in the book of Daniel in the Old Testament. If you have your Bible, please open to chapter 6, Daniel chapter 6. And tonight we're going to be studying this this good story, exciting story, and really even our picture here on our title page uh, tells you what we're going to look at tonight. Uh, I hope it'll be a blessing to you. Let's pray and we'll begin. Heavenly Father, we need you. We are, we are going to open this precious Bible. Ourselves, we cannot understand all that we need to know. But with your help, there is nothing in here we cannot understand. And so I'm praying tonight that the Holy Spirit of God will move in my heart and in the hearts of the folks who are watching tonight and help us to be drawn into a more intimate relationship with you through this study tonight. Thank you for allowing us to see these Old Testament people like Daniel, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these young men now becoming older in the story. Thank you for the truths that are here. Help us to learn from their testimony. And I pray that tonight our testimony will become one that in the future people will be able to look at our lives learn from us, and really follow you as a result. We pray for these things and ask you to guide us into the truth of the Bible tonight. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, well, really, we're going to see this very familiar story. We get the sign name for Daniel from this chapter. His sign name for Daniel. Sign name is Daniel. Why? Well, I'm going to teach you tonight. I think you already know, but uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful story. As we closed our last study here in chapter 5, we left a king named Belshazzar. And if you remember, a hand had written on the wall and he knew his kingdom was going to go. And it's true, what happened was the leader of another nation, the Medes and the Persians, was waiting outside the wall while chapter 5 was happening here. At the end of the chapter, we don't read it, but what happens is that army, history tells us that that army came in underneath, remember, underneath in, in the water, they came in, and they conquered that king and Babylon, and they were replaced with the Medo-Persian nation. They became uh, the authority in this area. And so what happened, uh, the king that, we, that we're going to meet next, his name is Darius, D-A-R-I-U-S, Darius. Uh, we'll, we'll meet him. And really, God blessed the Jewish young men who were there in that nation. Now it's changing from Babylon to uh, Medo-Persian. So we're going to say Medo-Persian, sign name Medo-Persian, Medo-Persian, so M-D. I'm sorry, <laughs> M-P, Medo-Persian. Oh, my Anyway, so we're introduced to this new king, and I want you to see him. So we're in chapter number six. By the way, there are many, many verses here that are wonderful in this chapter. We're not going to have time to read every one. I would encourage you to read the whole chapter yourself. It's a wonderful chapter, easy to read. It's a wonderful story, truly happened. 
but I want you to see just a few verses here. First, it says that it pleased Darius to set over his kingdom 120 princes, which should uh, be over his whole kingdom. So what he's doing, he has a huge kingdom, many, many people he's responsible for. So what did he do? He kind of divided his kingdom and put it under the authority of 120 princes. Okay, that's verse one. Let's see verse two. In, in verse 2, it says, and over the, those 120 princes, over these, he appointed three presidents, three presidents, of whom Daniel was the first. He was the top. That the princes might give an account unto them, to those three, and the king should have no damage. So really, the goal of the king he was very, very smart. He had many, many people under his authority. And he said, I cannot control all of these people. So he set 120 princes. And they were responsible for 120 different segments of his kingdom. Over those 120, he placed three called here presidents. Of those three presidents, top, top was Daniel. Now, it's interesting what the Bible says about Daniel. It says in verse 3, Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes. Why? Because there was an excellent spirit in him. And the king thought to set him, that is Daniel, over the whole realm. Uh, interesting. I want you to see here, um, Daniel himself, uh, let me back up just a little bit. The first king we're introduced to here in the book of Daniel is the famous king Nebuchadnezzar. We, we gave him the sign name, King Nebuchadnezzar. He was powerful, and he really built this nation. He conquered many other smaller uh, nations, and they came in under his rule, his kingdom. After him, there were, there were five other kings who were still Babylon kings. The last one we saw last time in chapter 5 was really a grandson of King Nebuchadnezzar. His name was Belshazzar. So now this Darius really is the seventh, seventh king that Daniel has been under the authority or control of since he was moved 900 miles from Israel and brought to Babylon. This is the seventh king that Daniel has served under. I want you to see what it says about, about Daniel. In this, is still, we're going to stay in verse 3. It says that Daniel was preferred. He was, he was thought of above the other two presidents and all 120 of the princes. He was preferred above them. It means, it's simple. Darius, the king, saw value in Daniel he did not see in the others. And so he really, his favorite was not the other two presidents or the 120 princes. It was, it was Daniel. He was the top. Uh, why? It says later in the verse, same verse, it says because he, that is Daniel, had an excellent spirit in him. Now pause for one moment. What made Daniel have an excellent spirit in him? Daniel was a child of God. He believed in the one true God. The other two presidents and the 120 princes that were under, they believed, they trusted in idols who were dead, not real. But Daniel served God who is real and God who, who can give wisdom and help and all those things. 
So Daniel had an excellent spirit in him. And the third thing I want you to see is that this is the man, Daniel is the man that the king preferred. And so even though he was under a new king, the seventh king in the list, he still is an honored position that he's in. And he has that wonderful spirit in him. Um, do you remember in the Old Testament book of Genesis, there was another young Hebrew man named Joseph. We signed Joseph. He had a coat of many, many colors. Joseph. He also, if you remember, he had been thrown into prison, but he was taken from prison and set second in command in all of Egypt. Do you remember? A very similar, similar story with here what's happening uh, with Daniel in this uh, sixth chapter. The Bible clearly tells us that Daniel himself, he was preferred by the king. Uh, the king knew he could trust Daniel. And so he, he promoted Daniel. Now, that's, this is where the story becomes really interesting. The other two, remember there were three presidents, 120 princes, but three presidents. Daniel is one of the three, but he's the top. The other two presidents, this is where the, uh, really, they want to take down Daniel. They want to move up. They want to be promoted themselves. And they think the only way for us us to be promoted is for Daniel to be gone. So they begin to try to trick and deceive the king so they can replace Daniel. And uh, the Bible tells us that they really tried to examine the life of Daniel to find something wrong with him so they could prove to the king we should be up here and Daniel should be gone. He should be gone. Should be us, the two of us. And so they, uh, they, they looked and looked and looked. Maybe they followed him. Maybe they, they hired a person, a private detective, to watch his life, to find some wrong things with him, some bad things about him. And here's what they said. Look in verse 5. In Daniel chapter 6, verse 5, this is the testimony of these two. These two presidents, they said, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Now, I want you to see it's interesting. They said, we're looking and looking and looking for some filthy thing, something wrong with this man, but we can find nothing. Oh, wait, 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 wait. The one place we know we can catch him is in his devotion, his commitment to his God. Remember, Daniel is living in a nation of idol worshipers. Everybody else is worshiping idols. But Daniel has continued faithfully to worship and serve and love God. And these two men, they said, if we're going to catch him in anything, it will be with something with his God and his relationship with God. The people who are against you, is, is that their testimony about you? That the only thing they can find wrong with you is your commitment, your relationship with your God. What an incredible testimony Daniel had before these men. They watched him. They examined his life. And they said, the only thing we're going to find against him is something that would be his, his relationship with his God. That's the only place. I was thinking about it. I would hope that I would have that testimony. You know, we are famous today. We want to blame every other person except for us for our troubles and the difficult things that we face. May I say it's time for us to stop 
blaming the politicians in America for how our nation has gone down. It's time for us to, to stop blaming leadership for us going down personally. I'm going to get real private with you. It's time for us to stop blaming other pastors who maybe have hurt us in the past, blaming them because we are not a spiritual person. No. Here is Daniel. His testimony is the only place they could find something wrong to blame him was in his, his relationship with God. I want that testimony for me. I hope you want that testimony for you. These other two presidents now, uh, they develop a plan. So they go into the king, these two. Uh, Daniel is not there. These two go in to see the king. And they, they bow and they say, oh, king, you're wonderful. Uh, we think that you should be honored. Uh, we think that uh, you, should, you should sign a law that says that it's illegal to pray to any person except for you. You, king, are like a god. You're like a god, and you should be honored for 30 days. Uh, you think that's a good idea? And the king, the king made a huge mistake. Why? He did not wait and talk with Daniel. He listened to these two. Sounded good. He, okay, I will sign. He signs the law that day that it is illegal for any person to pray for the next 30 days for any person to pray to any God except for the king. He signs it, and really, he's tricked. He's deceived. These two men have deceived their own king. What for? For their benefit, for their promotion is what they think. And so they have tricked the king. I want you to see what happens next. And, and I, I'm skipping a lot of verses. You have to read them yourself later. They're wonderful. But it says here in chapter 6 that something interesting happened. The Bible tells us that Daniel, knowing what had happened, Daniel heard about these two uh, presidents uh, kind of tricking the king to sign that law. Uh, Daniel knew what had happened. Look, look at verse 10. In Daniel chapter 6, verse 10, verse 10, it says this. Now, and we're going we're gonna to pull apart this verse and look at some words. There's some amazing phrases here in this verse. But this is verse 10. It says, now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he, Daniel, went into his house, his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, and he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Now, <laughs> let's examine some words here. I love this verse. First thing I want to let you know, Daniel was not ignorant. Uh, Daniel was not there when the two presidents pre presented this law, this new law to the king. He was not there. He was, he was missing. These two presented. But Daniel heard about the law. All of the people in Medo-Persia had heard about this law. So Daniel knew he was not ignorant. He knew about that law. He knew it had been signed. He knew all the things. He knew the penalty for going against the law. We'll come to that in a little bit. He knew that the uh, penalty, you can see in verse 7, I skipped, but it says at the end of verse 7 that if a person disobeyed this law, they were to be cast in the den of lions. And Daniel knew. He knew the penalty. But I want you to see what happens. He sa it says that he kneeled upon his knees three times a day. He, he knelt three times. I can just see Daniel morning, noon, night, 
Kneel, kneel, kneel. He opened the windows in his house. He faced toward, looking toward the east, which is where Jerusalem was from Babylon or Medo-Persia at this time. He would face to the east morning, maybe noon, and night. These two, these two presidents knew that he did that. He did it every day. And it says here that he kneeled upon his knees three times a day. And what did he do? Just simply, he says that he prayed before his God. Daniel knew the law had been signed for the next 30 days. It is illegal for any person to pray to any god or idol except for the king Darius. He knew that. But Daniel also knew that the Bible said that thou shalt have no other gods before me. And Daniel knew if he were to pray to King Darius he would be putting King Darius above God, and he refused. He prayed to his, he prayed before his God, not to the king. And it says at the very, I love the last part of the verse, this is what he had done. Daniel did not start doing this on that day. He had done it, it says here, a four time. It means that's what Daniel did before. All the time before, three times a day, morning, noon, night, he knelt, he faced, he faced to the east to Jerusalem, and he prayed to his God. And he did, did the same thing that he had always done. Uh, Daniel did not change to try to look like a spiritual person. Daniel was a spiritual person. Daniel did pray to God every day, three times every day. It was his habit. It was his testimony. It was his behavior. He didn't change anything. That's what he always did. Remember verse 5, where the men, those two men said, if we're going to find something wrong with Daniel, it will be something connected with his God. Remember? They knew his testimony. They knew Daniel's reputation. It was consistent. Oh, I hope your testimony, my testimony, is consistent like that. I hope my, that my neighbors know that Jim Braceland, he, he, does, he goes to church, he prays, he reads his Bible, he witnesses to other people about Jesus Christ. I hope my neighbors, my family, my friends know that about me the same as they knew about Daniel. Well, you know what happened. These two presidents, their plan is working. Yes, they're excited. Why? They caught Daniel and Daniel was brought before the king for disobeying that new Medo-Persian law. Now, according to tradition, when a person was caught disobeying a law, they must be punished before the sun went down that day. And so here what happens, look what it says in verse 14. This is Daniel chapter 6, verse 14. It says, Then the king, when he heard these words, the what words? Uh, the two presidents said, Oh, uh, I'm sorry to tell you, but Daniel disobeyed your law. You're going to have to throw him into the den of the lions. When the king heard these words, he was sore displeased with himself. He was not happy with himself. I believe for the first time the king understood these men have deceived me. These two men have tricked me. I depend on Daniel the most. These two have fooled me. I listened to bad counsel. It says that he was not happy with himself, and he set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored until the going down of the sun of the sun to deliver him. The king was thinking, 
How can I change that law? What can I do? Can I make a, an addition to the law? No. Can I remove the law? No. It's for 30 days. I signed. Um, uh, what can I do to free Daniel? He was worried. He was thinking about it. He was concerned about it. He came to the end when the sun was coming down and the king understood. I am stuck. I have no choice. I'm going to have to throw Daniel according to the law of the Medes and the Persians. I'm going to have to throw Daniel into that lion's den. So I want you to see what happened. The king, they take, they take Daniel to the edge of the, of the pit where the lions are down there. You can hear them. You know, they were probably in some kind of a cave uh, that, they, that they would, really, it was meant for punishment. They didn't feed the lions. They would, they would use them to destroy people. And so the king, he takes Daniel to the edge. And they're standing there. And remember, this king, Darius, he loves Daniel. He trusts Daniel. He believes in the wisdom of Daniel. He knows that Daniel has an excellent spirit in him. He's depending on Daniel. He has placed Daniel at the top of the three leaders. Really, he's just underneath the king in responsibility and authority. And here he stands with his friend. And he says this. Look in verse 14. I'm sorry, 16. Verse 16. The Bible says in verse 16, this is, these are the words of the king Darius. He looks, he looks over at Daniel and he says, Daniel, thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. Now, the king said these words. I don't think he believed these words. I'll prove it to you in just a little bit. But the words that he says are very, very important. Again, words mean something. Look what the king said to Daniel. Daniel, thy God whom thou servest continually. Daniel, I've watched your life. You serve your God every day, all day, all night. You serve your God always, all the time. You never take vacation from your God. And then he adds at the end, your God will deliver you. I think he said it like this. I hope your God can deliver you. Really? He didn't think it would happen. He knew, he knew those lions down in that hole. They were hungry. He knew what had happened before when they threw people down in there. They never even touched the floor. The lions <laughs> would swallow them and just destroy their lives. And in his heart, he thought, the same thing is going to happen with my friend Daniel. And even though he said these words, he didn't believe them. How do I know that? Well, the Bible tells us in this chapter, when Daniel was thrown into that den, the king turned and he went back home. He went back to the palace, beautiful place, soft bed, wonderful food, beautiful music to listen to at any time he wanted. He went back home. The sun had gone down. It was dark. The king went into his bedroom People said, oh, we, want to feed, we want to feed you, king. We want to feed you. And the king refused. I don't want to eat. I'm not hungry. Uh, the people came to play music for him. He said, no, 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 uh, music out. He went to his bed. And maybe this happened to you. He laid down on the bed, but his eyes were wide awake and he couldn't sleep. And his heart was troubled. His mind was troubled. His body was back and forth and back and forth. And the Bible tells us that all night long, the king was awake. He could not sleep. Now, he had said to Daniel, your God, he'll deliver you. But he didn't believe it. 
you understand this king is not a believer, a believer in God. He, he's trusting idols up to this time. That's going to change in a little bit. But I want you to see what happens. The king all night long, he tossed and turned. Maybe he stood up and he walked back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. He didn't eat. He didn't want to hear music. Uh, I'm sure his servants were worried and concerned about the king. They had never seen him like that before. And then the morning comes. After the night without food, without music, and without sleep, the king hurries. Uh, the Bible tells us, look what it says here in verse 19. It says, Then the king rose very early in the morning, and he went with haste unto the den of lions. I'm sure the whole way there he's walking and he's thinking, Oh, it's going to be horrible. I'm going to see blood and bones and, and flesh, and, and Daniel's going to be gone. And he's walking hurriedly. He walks. Look at verse 20. It says in verse 20, When he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice. It means a sad, oh, a sad voice. He cried unto Daniel, and the king spake and said to Daniel, O oh, Daniel, servant, and notice again, of the living God, whom thou servest continually, again, same thing he said before, was your God able to deliver thee from the lions? Verse 20, he stands at the opening and he cries out. By the way, it's dark down in the den. There's no light in there. And the king, he can't see what's in the den. He just knows it's a hole down there and the lions are, are roaming about. And, and I'm, he's sure they have destroyed Daniel. Oh, Daniel, was your God whom you serve continually, was he able to deliver thee from the lions? And finally, the king, as he listens, his heart is heavy. His mind is running all over the place. He hears these words in verse 21 and 22. He hears the voice of his good friend, Daniel. Daniel says, O king, live forever. My God hath sent his angel and shut the, the lion's mouths, the lion's mouths, that they have not hurt me. Can you imagine the heart of the king? <laughs> the king is excited because his friend Daniel is alive. But more, the king knows one thing for sure. Daniel's God is real. No idol could protect him. He knew those lions. He knew they were hungry. He knew they normally would not even let the person touch the floor before they would eat them and destroy their bodies. And there he looks and he sees Daniel standing there and he's saying, King, I'm fine. My God sent an angel. By the way, I noticed it said one angel, not many. God only need, needed one angel to shut the mouths of the lions. And they've done me no harm. The king was so excited. And I want you to see just a few verses left. Verse 23. Uh, then was the king exceeding glad for him, for Daniel. And he commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken out of the den, and no manner of hurt was found on him. Why? Because he believed in his God. Daniel's God took care of him. And he, he did not have to worry. He was not hurt. <laughs> Probably, I've often thought about this, the king tossed and turned all night. He didn't sleep at all. I think probably Daniel got eight hours of sleep. Good snoring sleep with the purr of the lions 
next to him. And, and Daniel was fine. He was beyond fine. Daniel also knew God protected me. The king agreed and testified with Daniel about what God had done for him. That's not the end of the story. The end of the story is that the king took those two presidents and, and all of their family, and he, had, he ordered for them all to be thrown into the same den of lions. And the Bible tells us they did not touch the floor. They were destroyed. Evil men who made a bad plan to deceive the king got their reward. Their reward was not what they thought of promotion <laughs> because God did not leave his throne. God honored Daniel, his servant, and he allowed the king Darius to see his awesome power on display. Uh, really, it touches my heart. Uh, the king gave a personal testimony, and it's, it's included here, and I've, I'm going to put it up here, verses 26 and 27 at the end of this chapter. There are two verses that I'm going to that I want to that I want to end with today. There's many, many, many wonderful verses here. I'm sorry I've had to skip, but for time. But the king said these words in verse 26 and 27. The king said, I make a decree or an announcement that in every dominion of in every area of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God, and steadfast forever. And his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. The king said, I have a limit to my kingdom, but God, no limit. I will have an end, but God will not have an end. In verse 27, 27, he said, He, that is God, he delivered and he rescued and he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth. Who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? What an incredible story. What an incredible testimony. As I think about that, I, I think about Daniel and his testimony. There he, he all night was safe. Why? Because he refused to give in to a human law that went, tried to go over God's divine law. I want to encourage you today. We need to stand on this Bible. We need to trust it. We need to stand on it. And we need to obey it. We need to copy Daniel. Daniel just obeyed God. And God proved himself strong and powerful, not only in the life of Daniel, but in the life of King Darius. I believe maybe you and I will meet King Darius in heaven because of this, this act that, that happened in this chapter 6. What an exciting, exciting story. Many, many things for us to apply to us. There are just a few things that I'll give you very quickly. We need to be, be people of prayer, like Daniel. Pray every day. It's important. And we need to stand where it is right to stand and not try to blame other people for things that happen wrong to us. Daniel never complained. He just continued to pray. I'm sure that Daniel prayed when he was being lowered down into that den of lions. And God answered prayer. He will do the same for you and me. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for uh, this wonderful story of Daniel. What an incredible testimony Daniel is for us. But help us to have that same kind of a testimony in front of our friends, family, and neighbors. 
Help us be faithful to you regardless of what is happening around us. And help us not to complain about what's happening around us or blame other people for our problems. Help us to copy Daniel. Accept, pray, and continue to walk faithfully with you, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week.